All right, well, welcome back everybody. So today I have decided it is time to do my winter oat food plot. And uh, I've made my mind up to do that because I messed up this year. I tried to cheap out and bought what was called Austrian winter peas. They ain't no good, no good at all. I was sitting in the uh, tree stand yesterday morning looking going, what a pitiful plot. Typically every year I do iron clay peas, but they went up to almost $50 a bag this year. I thought I'd try something different that was a lot cheaper and it bit me. But this is typically the time I do my oat winter plots anyways. So as you see behind me and what I just got done doing, I've turned this plot in twice. What's left over here was uh, the millet plot from doing dove shoot earlier this year. Now I still have millet growing back here in the field. That's just volunteer stuff that you see that's green. And typically I do this entire field around November in winter oats. But due to the recent announcement that uh, I'm gonna try to do YouTube full time and taking a pretty substantial pay cut, I have decided I'm not gonna plant all that this year. That's just money I don't need to spend on seed. But we are gonna get this upper plot going. Let me show you what I got going on. All right, so up here is what's left of those uh, Austrian winter peas. I'm gonna leave those going for a couple more weeks until these oats come up and I've already got another bag of oats I'll put up here. I typically stagger my plantings every year anyways. Like I said, normally this entire thing is planted in winter oats, but uh, I don't think I'm gonna take the time or money this year to plant all that. What I am seeing is I've got some volunteer millet that's coming up and trying to seed out. We're gonna have some cool days here this coming up week, so it may stunt the growth and it may kill it, I don't know. But if that uh, millet out there winds up seeding out, Hey, I've got to mill it on the ground for second phase. I wasn't planning that, but I decided to let it go. And I'm kind of happy with what I see. Like I said, if it seeds out, we'll do another video on that where I'll spray and kill that field off, mow millet seed out there again, and might get a couple more dove shoots off of it. Believe it or not, I still have some dove coming in every day, picking up scraggler seeds, even though I think the majority of them on the ground are rotted. So this was also millet, um, this upper section here. It didn't do quite as well and it had a bunch of really thick uh, cut over grass and millet stems in here. You can see some of it right here. That's why I just made the decision to go ahead and dist all this in twice. I personally prefer putting some uh, organic matter back in the soil. I think it's a good thing putting green and brown dead back in there. You got to give your soil something back and I'm not just going to come out here and load it up with fertilizer every year. So I do like doing that. So what I did is I just went across the field several times and then I come back and do what's called splitting the middles. I don't know if that's a common term or not, but you can see these deep furrows. That's where the edge of my disc are right there. So whenever I come back for a second time, I'll put the tractor right over this and split the middle between the last two rows and it busts everything up very nicely. So I'm happy with what I see. Y'all have seen this disc does an excellent job. I absolutely love that disc. Um, two passes and I've got this field turned over very well. So what I'm going to do now is adjust the gains on this uh, disc to make it a lot less aggressive. Go over this one more time. I'm going to split the middles again and kind of fill in all these deep furrows because if I were to come out here and put seed on this right now, everything that's in the deep furrows is just going to die. It's going to get planted way too deep. I really, really love this set of discs. Really heavy duty frame, half inch plate. Um, Full, full boxed in and 20 inch disc. Weight is key. I've told y'all that before and a lot of people have mentioned how impressed they are with this being a little set of discs for a compact tractor, how well it does. Weight is key. Avoid those angle iron discs at all costs. Go ahead and spend the money. Get you something that's really heavy duty and boxed in. This is a Dirt Dog 200. Uh, these guys don't even know I have this. I'm not getting paid to say anything about it. I just really like this set of discs. We've had it for years and years and years. My father used to have it. I bought it from him and uh, it's got good adjustability, real easy to use. I mean, for example, these handles right here, you just pop this pin out for your adjustment and you can slide the disc forward, backwards, do whatever you want. The last set of discs we had, you had to loosen nuts every time. They had nothing to hang on to. So little features like that I like and the fact that it's so heavy duty. All right, so now you can see what I've done. I have slid this back. You see it's got all these different adjustment holes for the front and rear. Slid this back to make these discs almost in line. You don't want them absolutely in line. They don't, they don't do very well. They don't throw dirt at all that way. But I've got them almost straight, front and rear. So what this will do now, it takes this disc from being turned in like this and cutting very aggressive to, like I said, almost straight. And it'll just kind of throw some dirt 
and it'll fill in all those little voids, ruts, and furrows. So let me show you what I mean. And we'll barely put this down in the dirt, maybe sink it two to three inches. I've got an adjustment in the tractor that keeps me from putting this all the way down. Like I said, all we're doing is just kind of distributing the soil across the top to get us a nice level seed bed. Not looking for perfect, but we've got to do better than those deep ruts. So this was the adjustment in the tractor I'm talking about. This raises and lowers the three-point arms back there. It's just got a little knob over there. I think almost all tractors have this. And uh, it's got numbers on it. Usually somewhere around three, three and a half. That's where I'll set this. So whenever I lower my disc down, it'll hit a catch in here and doesn't go all the way down. Because again, I don't want to sink these deep in the dirt just to have the disc throwing more dirt. I just want to just disturb the top and smooth the, uh, the top seed bed. out of the field and what I've done is I've still got my disc set up uh, to where they're not aggressive at all we're gonna lightly cover the seed and typically I pull a roller packer behind this set of discs to really roll smooth out the roots and pack the seed down I'm a big believer in good seed to soil contact problem is we've got multiple campers up there at the barn Tiffany is moving us from a fifth wheel to a pull behind today 
Uh, if you've watched that video, we're living in a camper right now until we get our house built. So it's a really bad day for me to go try to dig that roller packer out. I didn't realize I had it blocked so badly. It's just not convenient and not really an option today to get in there and do that with everything else that's going on. So I'm just gonna lightly cover the seed, call it good. It's not my preferred way, but I've done this a lot in the past. The seed will come up. And since I knew I was gonna do that today, I went ahead and put the seed out extra thick since some will get, probably get covered a little bit too deep and some will be exposed on the surface. The exposed seed on the surface, no problem. Turkeys, dove, everything else, they'll come out and eat it, they'll enjoy it. But I think I have plenty of seed out there that it should germinate very well. And uh, that's just the way we're gonna have to do it today. So let's lightly cover this seed in this plot, one in the back, and uh, check these food plots off the list. Well, while I have the tractor hooked up to the disc, I decided to go ahead and disc in some of these strips. Um, this is actually some of that seed that I had mowed and, and blew down a while back. So there still could be some in there that's getting turned up. But there's one thing I've learned about Dove. They are addicted to fresh tilled dirt. They love it. So even if there's not much seed in there because they've already been coming to this field, maybe this is just enough to kind of keep them scratching around and interested. Especially when I was coming back through the woods here the other day, there was a huge wad of dove just laid up on the ground in here. That's kind of unusual, but I guess they were just taking a uh, little siesta for the day. So there is a little bit of hope out here, and I'll show you what I mean. I wish I had to grab some fertilizer when I went to the uh, feed and seed store today. I just didn't realize that uh, this millet hadn't had a chance to come up. So if you look at here, this is all millet. That's what's in all these strips that I've left. And it's trying to come up and it's seeding out. So it's starting to put on little heads. I wish I had to fertilize this. However, um, they're not calling for rain for the next several days, so fertilizer would do no good right now. But that we got some cool days coming up too. And if it doesn't look like it's gonna kill this off, millet doesn't like cool weather, and uh, the next rainstorm comes and this is still looking green and good like this, I will go grab you know a couple bags of fertilizer zip through here with the four-wheeler and hit it real heavy and there's a chance i could get uh, some millet strips for the second phase and then what i'll do is spray kill it off once it seeds out really good and blow the seed into this uh, little bit of tilled dirt that i have all right well here we are got half of the top food plot done and the one way in the back so what i'll do is uh, next week once we move campers around and i get the roller packer available and uh, get me a free day. I'll come back out here and disc the rest of this in. Although I may wait until I see some of this germinate so there's something up here for the deer. But this next uh, section up here, I'll plant it with the same exact stuff. I'll roller pack it in and I'm curious to see the difference versus packed, or packed up here, excuse me, and unpacked. Um, it'll be hard to tell the results because these are gonna be getting planted so far apart. But I feel uh, I feel pretty good that this will come up okay, especially if we get good hard packing rain. I'm looking out there, I see a few seeds, but overall it's covered quite well. I'm sure some of it's too deep. And I just realized I forgot to tell you all exactly what I planted. So typically every year I always do uh, just winter oats. Usually they're cheap, uh, easy to get, but I went there to get those today. They were actually out of winter oats, but they had a five-way blend. And the majority of what's in a five-way blend, I'm talking like 80% of it, is oats and wheat which is great that's stuff i love planting for the winter anyways and it'll last all the way through and once all this grass and everything dies off after we get a few frosts it'll still be uh you know nice and green out here in the deer then love coming to it there was also some rape in here uh let's see here austrian winter peas 
not my favorite that's what i planted up there and there was one other thing i can't remember what it was but very small percentages of all that might have been turnips i think something like that so food plots are done like i said we're about to be moving uh, campers i'll show that off and show how i'm going to set up the new camper once we get it in place i'll get back on the storm shelter keep continuing to build on that so a lot of things coming on the channel quick little house update if y'all are interested we uh we ran into some complications meeting with the architect this last week uh they had issues going on so we're meeting this week they've already started on our house plan some I'm actually thinking about possibly presenting some modifications to Tiffany that we may carry to a meeting that we're having tomorrow. By the time y'all watch this, I gotta keep up with all this. I think we're all be done, done met with them. So as soon as we can get the plans done, we'll get them over to the engineer. I don't know the time frame on uh, him, getting everything stamped and ready. Then I go apply for the building permit and then we start breaking ground. So we're still a little ways on the house. That's fine. I need to finish the shooting house anyways, but I'll keep y'all updated. Once we get, you know, engineered plan stamped, we're gonna be getting real close then. It's just however long the permitting process takes. And all that's a little complicated right now with COVID because our local uh, facilities have been closed forever. I mean, forever, months and months and months. So it's kind of hard applying and getting permits. You gotta do it all over the phone and go fax stuff. So it's a bit aggravating, but I guess that's life for everybody right now. So thank y'all so much for watching. We'll have one more food plot video coming up here to kind of round the year out. And then I'll decide what I'm going to do out here. If we get any more dove coming in, I'll have some dove shoots on the other channel. Uh, that's going to be hit or miss, I do believe. And I've already told you about the other projects that will be coming up any day now. So thank y'all so much for watching. We truly do appreciate the support.